Hello my living things, family and friends. Welcome back to the channel guys. It's your girl Lynn and yes y'all we are here for another installment of Storytime with Lynn. You guys know I am reading um, excerpts from Ms. Viola Davis book Finding Me and so far I know it's been a struggle. It's been a lot that her family has went through and herself um, but yeah we're going to continue on and I've just been reading a little bit from each chapter so the last chapter we read um, the little beginning of three so today we'll be picking up in chapter four okay guys but right before I do that I want to say thank you to one of my awesome friends here in YouTube land my girl Andrea Nicole I got your card so yes guys um we usually try to um, do a uh, exchange of Christmas cards, Valentine's Day cards and things like that. But your girl have been busy. Life just been life. And so I didn't get a chance to really do it. But even though if I don't get to do it with all of you guys, um, the one person that really, you know, I do try to keep up with and I haven't opened it yet. I, I'm opening it now. Um, Andrea is Andrea. And a lot of times our friend Daniel, who is um, from uh, Golden Finds. Um, you guys know Daniel. That is the YouTube bestie. Um, and I love her. I love her cards. Her cards always say may contain sparkles. So I have to be careful opening her cards, but yours is on the way friends. So we still wanted to be able to do that. So we went on ahead and, um, still sent cards, even though they went out late, it is still February. It is still the month of love. So I went on ahead, um, and said, yeah, sure. Even if it gets here late, let's still do the exchange. So she sent me some, oh, and it is sparkles and it's the love. Oh, I love it. They're little hearts. Oh, y'all. And this is what I love so much. Um, we like these. So it kind of makes me remember being in school where you get to um, exchange these little, um, the little cards that you, you get. And so, oh God, I don't want to tear it. But like we get to share. She got Lynn 2024. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm trying to open it up. But I, we like thought these were really cute. All friends for all. So this is from um, Trolls. And then we got this one. Oh, yes, honey. I love this one. It is a Barbie. And look at all the Barbies. Barbie girl. I love getting stuff like this. Um, we're such big, I don't know, kids at heart. And so we like to exchange these. So like I said, yours is on the way. Thank you so much. And Ninja Turtles. This was actually one of my favorite movies. I love Ninja Turtles. It says love fades. Pizza is forever. <laughs> yeah. So I like that we still did this. So she sent me some of these and the card. Thank you, friend. It says happy Valentine's Day, friend. Sorry, this card is getting to you a little late. Again, life has been super crazy. Me too, friend. Me too. Um, but happy Valentine's Day. I hope it was filled with lots of love, goodies. Um, hope this uh, card still adds some love to your February. And it does, friend. It really does. I really am so grateful for the friendships that I have forged right here in YouTube land. You guys are so thoughtful and so amazing. So I did get your card. Again, yours is on the way. <laughs> um, so y'all, we're going to jump right into our mini session of uh, story time with Lynn. And y'all already know I like to light my candle. So I did light one of my little candles. Um, so I can't remember which one, but I lit one of my little candles from the Dollar Tree. Y'all already know. And it smells so nice and sweet. So I like to use this time as a relaxing time. Um, so again, I implore you to do the same. If you like, you could play me in the background. Um, just listen to the story. Or you can actually sit down and watch. Make yourself a cup of tea, coffee, cocoa, or something to drink. Or again, you can have something cold. Um, and just take a few minutes off your feet and listen to her story or just a little bit more of her story. So let's go ahead and jump into chapter four. So chapter four heading is called 128. So if you guys were here for part three, um, you guys know 128 is the apartment building her and her family stayed in. So that is the title of this one. So it says he who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. And this is from Friedrich Nietzsche. Okay, this is a quote by Friedrich Nietzsche. This is starting um, the chapter. So it says, when I was six years old, my three older sisters, my brother, although my brother was almost never around, and I loved going to school. School was our haven. It was right next door and we were big on school especially my sister Diane. 
she absolutely loved school. She never wanted to miss a day. It was the dead of winter and we had no heat. Next, the electricity was cut off and then we had no phone. It just kept escalating. When you have no heat, no gas, you have no hot water. It was sub-zero weather. Freezing. Absolutely freezing. And of course the pipes froze. So there was no running water. We couldn't even flush the toilet. To make matters worse, we were all extreme bed wetters. Not going to school was unheard of for us. But that day we all stayed home. I remember sitting in the living room all day in sub-zero weather, all huddled up together, smelling of urine, freezing, and watching my mom. Mama was just lost, just lost. Didn't know what to do, no running water, the pipes are frozen, there's no heat, there's no phone. We clutched together, all just shivering. And somewhere around midday, my sister Diane stood up and announced, I'm going to school. She spat on her hand. She wiped all the mucus out of her eyes and she asked, how do I look? My mama said, you look good, ma, using her Southern term. You look beautiful, ma. Okay, all right, I'm going to school. And she went on. The rest of us were still there shivering when my mama finally said, we're going to have to go and try to get some heat assistance. We layered on every item of clothing that we could find. Even on the best days, we never had the right size shoes or clothes. A lot of the times we couldn't even find socks. We almost never had clothes that were new. Every once in a while, we would go to Zares, a clothing store kind of like JCPenney back in the day, and get something on layaway. From the most part, or well, for the most part, we went to St. Vincent de Paul. We loved going there because it was an adventure, sorting through everybody else's used stuff. Everything seemed to have a story. Books, old toys, roller skates, skippies, sneakers, even fur coats and furniture. That frigid day, we put on whatever we had and started on out into the cold. Into the cold. The heating assistance offices were downtown Pawtucket, one town over. Mom, Dolores, Anita, and I walked in freezing sub-zero weather. I was still the youngest at the time, and I would cry in a minute. I was a total crybaby. As we, were, we had started walking, I howled in tears. When we walked by the school on our way, the principal of the school, Mrs. Prosser, saw us. She was a great woman, tall and thin, with bright red hair. She always looked so regal to me and was both powerful and kind. She saw me. Mrs. Prosser would call me to her office and whenever she did, I would think, oh my God, what did I do? Because I was really a troublemaker. Even when I hadn't done anything wrong, I would wait for the shoe to drop. But often she would call me to her office and shower me with bags of hand-me-downs that belonged to her daughter. Really cute clothes and little purses. I would wear them to school and just stand in the schoolyard during recess and pose in the clothes. She had gifted me as if to say, look at me. It was like I was demanding or begging for attention. Positive attention. Not wanting anyone to touch my perfectly put together outfit. Mrs. Prosser knew our situation. When she saw us, she yelled from the window, Mrs. Davis, Mrs. Davis. My mama stopped. We were huddled together, shivering when the principal ran out. She was so desperate to get to us that Mrs. Prosser didn't even have on a coat. Mrs. Davis, your kids aren't in school. What's going on? We have no heat, no electricity. We ain't got nothing. And the pipes then froze. There's no running water. We can't even wash up. We can't do nothing. Oh, Mrs. Davis, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Tears kind of welled up in her eyes as she looked at us and touched my face. I'm so sorry. I wish there was something we could do. We're going to go downtown to Pawtucket and see if I can get some someone to help us pay the bills. 
Okay, well, just let us know if there is anything we can do. I am so sorry. I just wanted to know why your kids weren't in school. That period of my life was filled with shame. The feeling that you get in the pit of your stomach when you have stage fright or humiliation. That was the shame of 128. Shame completely eviscerates you, destroys any sense of pride you may have in yourself. One day in class, I had to use the bathroom really bad and I just kept my hand raised, but the teacher never acknowledged me. I couldn't hold it in anymore, so I peed in my seat. It dripped on the floor and flooded my seat. My teacher got to me a dry pair of pants from the nurse's office, put my wet clothes in a paper bag, and sent me home. But the most humiliating part of this was coming back the next day to find my desk in a back corner of the classroom with the same big puddle of urine still in the seat. It stayed there until it slowly dried up. What? My six-year-old pee was too disgusting for even the janitor to clean? I was embarrassed a lot. And 128 only heightened that sense of humiliation. Our apartment building caught fire so many times. The first time it caught fire, I was in first grade. All the kids in school peered out of the, their classroom windows at the red fire truck in front of the building right next door to the school. We watched the firefighters reel out the hose pipe and spray streams of water into the building, smoke just billowing out. I heard an orchestra of voices. Oh my God, there's a fire. Who lives there? And one of the kids, that's Viola's house. The teacher, Mrs. Picard, stared at me. Viola, is that your house? I'm in my school room with my first grade classmates who already looked down at me for being black. Now looking out my, at my home burning. Yeah, I answered, watching as the firefighters ran inside of my building with hoses. I did not know if it was our apartment that caught fire. It was a perfect metaphor for the devastation that I had felt in my heart. Because the source of my deepest shame was now a source of horrified entertainment for people who exiled me from the day that we met. When I went home that day, the entire apartment was in disarray. It was our apartment that had caught fire. The fire damage was extensive, but the water damage was even worse. The very water that the firefighters had sprayed into our house to save it had also destroyed it. The linoleum was warped, bloated, and curved like waves across the floor. Looking at the remains of our apartment, I thought not even the firefighters had respect for the place that we had called home. Okay, guys, this is the next um, installment to our mini time or yeah, little short story times. Um, just discussing and reading and learning more and more about uh, just Viola's child life. Um, right now, we're still in her early years. Um, like first grade and um, I want to say kindergarten years and things like that. And wow, it's, it just was not a very easy time for her at all or her mom or her father. It just was tough um, in those days for them. And it's, it is kind of hard to fathom some of this, this stuff, but I know um, if we don't know someone um, directly, we may know someone indirectly who also went th through these things, or you may have went through certain things yourselves. Um, when it said something about a fire, it kind of gave me a story or reminded me of a story when I was about 12 or I think 12 or 13, excuse me. And we had um, a home and our house caught on fire. And so I know the devastation that can happen or that you feel when you, you know, see your house, you know, in flames. It's, it's a scary thing. Um, and they did the same thing, like it, it, our, in our house, like, of course the water kind of damaged it and things like that. So it can be sad. And I know some of these parts have really been rough y'all. So I really give just high props to Miss Davis because just what the little bit that we have been reading so far, wow, she has overcome so much. She will always have my respect. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining me for another story time. I so appreciate you guys. Again, if you have something you want to comment, if you have a memory, please do not be afraid to share. I love um, connecting with you guys like that. I love reading your comments. I always comment back. 
So thank you so much, guys. Catch me in the next one.